गाइज वेलकम टू माई चैनल एंड दिस वीडियो इज ऑल अबाउट चंडीगढ़ कॉलेज ऑफ आर्किटेक्चर फॉर दिस वीडियो आई हैव अ रियली स्पेशल गेस्ट मुस्कान सो शी इज फ्रॉम सी सी ए एंड शी विल बी एक्सप्लेनिंग एवरी थिंग अबाउट सी सी ए सो वॉच दिस वीडियो टिल दी एंड इन दिस वीडियो शी विल बी ऑल्सो शेयरिंग हर आर्किटेक्चर पोर्टफोलियो विद अस द टाइम स्टैम ऑफ दिस वीडियो विल बी गिवन इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन एंड फॉर सच मोर वीडियो प्लीज लाइक एंड सब्सक्राइब टू माई चैनल एंड वॉच दिस वीडियो टिल दी एंड हाई मुस्कान वेलकम टू माई चैनल This video will be about Chandigarh College of Architecture, and every doubt will be discussed in this video regarding placement, regarding college experience, and everything will be discussed by Muskan. First of all, I want to uh, ask a little bit introduction about you. So, can you tell our viewers about yourself? So, hi, I'm Muskan, and I am currently in third year in Chandigarh College of Architecture. I just finished my third year. I joined uh, CCA in 2018. Uh, I did take a gap year to get specifically into this college. It was I was aiming to get into this college, and I'm a local, so I am from Chandigarh. But I always uh, explored all the colleges, and I found this one to be the right fit for me. And yeah, I think, um, and I think everybody want asks a person why do you want to do architecture, and you know why did you choose the specific college that you did? So for me personally, architecture was uh, this. perfect midway um uh, to a professional and a very creative degree so that's why i chose architecture because i wanted to do something that's professional as well as you know i can have my creative freedom in and cca because it was when i joined it it was one of the top colleges in the country and i heard that it had great exposure in terms of the internships it gets and in terms of the faculty it gets so that was one good plus point for me that i really took in uh next question from muskan is what was her experience in cca so can you share with us what was your whole experience in cca till now so you know that's a very uh, that's a very different answer these days because uh half of my college life literally half of my college life i've gone to college physically and the other half in the three years that i've spent there has been online so i'm i'm, I'm going to share a bit of the both So when I did go in physically, it was a great campus. Like the environment over there is great. The you interact with the seniors, your students, your your fellow classmates, and your teachers very well. Like there's a lot of um, informal relationships as well with the teachers even. So there's a lot of closeness in that form, and the campus itself is really really good and inspiring. I mean, it's based off on a Corbusier design itself, so that architectural feel is always there, and From the moment you step into the college, most of the conversations you have about is architecture, design, and all of those creative things. So there's a lot of discussion that's motive, that's you know, uh, ins- motivated that you should discuss a lot of these things, and you really you you really get inspired looking at all the work uh, that they've put up. So we have we have works put up everywhere. We have uh, some sculptures here and there. We have paintings on our uh, studio walls that our seniors did it here and there. So we don't really constrain ourselves just to architecture. Our creative freedom is really, you know, let let it we let it flow. So I think my experience in CCC has been really nice because one, I get to explore a lot of my creative sides, and there's a lot of knowledgeable people there, and I can discuss any type of problem in any subject with any one of my seniors or my teachers, and I know I'll get a good response. So it's been really, it's been really good so far. and when it comes to online um i think it's pretty much the same uh, none of the teachers made us feel like you know we have some working hours uh, because online it gets really tough right so they were available for us throughout so i think that really helped us and i mean not all teachers can afford to be available at all hours but whoever could really did help us and uh, since half of our uh, half of our faculty is alumni of cc our alumni is a cc so that really helps again because we can have that extra bond with them of yeah. them not just be a faculty member but also somewhat our seniors and the next question from you is that can you quickly explain the entrance procedure that is involved in getting chandigarh college of architecture so what are the exam that are involved and uh, is there any counseling procedure that we have to go through so little bit about it so uh, cca is a government college so the only uh, exam they consider like the entrance exam they consider is the je paper 2 although you do give nata and other things for architecture but uh, since it's a government college we only consider je paper 2 and uh, so the general procedure for any government application through je papers 
uh, you get your rank after you've given your entrance and you got the result. And with your rank card and your mark sheet, you apply in the All India Counselling uh, on the on the website, right? And through that, usually what happens is even if you're not aiming for a specific college, if you've got a good rank and you know you'll get in, you apply, you just put in your rank in there and you uh, mention what all colleges you're looking for, and they reply to you with with uh, what all colleges you're getting in with your rank. So uh, and it depends for CCA, it depends every year the rank changes. So like I said, I took a gap year. So I did give my entrance in the gap year as well. Uh, my rank the first time round was around three thousand, and I. I was left with just one seat, so like basically I was next in merit and I didn't get it. So that's the only reason I chose to take a gap year because I knew I could cover that up. And the next year round, I had a rank around eleven hundred, so I got into it in the first spot as well. But uh, then again, the year next after I got in, uh, the rank went up to seven thousand. So it really depends on when you can get in, when you cannot. Uh, just. And uh, that's about it. So you put it on uh, all India counselling on, on the website. They respond to you with what all colleges you get in. If CC is one of the ones you get in, you apply to it. And there are rounds. So they will tell you like this. So there's there's a first, first round, second round, third round. There's a spot round. So by this spot round, uh, there's okay. So there's, there's multiple seats, right? So we have 40 seats, very limited seats. I think it's one of the lowest. Uh, Seats we have in the in the country would you know we just have forty seats in the entire batch. Oh, one more thing, Muskan, that if a person is applying for Chandigarh College of Architecture, what is the counselling procedure that he has to go? So JOSA is the counselling procedure that everyone has to go. So can you tell the website or maybe? That's the same platform that we would go through. Like I said, you take your rank card and you put it up there, and they tell you. If you're getting into CCA or any other college or not, and if CCA is one of the colleges in your list, then you apply through the website as well, and then you have a physical counselling after you've cleared that round, and then so the, in the physical counselling, like I said, there are rounds: first, second, third, and spot. So then those rounds start off in the physical counselling, where you I don't know now if it's COVID, but in my time it used to be physical counselling. You go with your document, submit it. And then you will give me your admission letter. What about NATA scorecard? If a person have a NATA scorecard, can he get into CCA? I NATA is for as far as I know private colleges. Uh, CCA only considers GE paper two. So the next question from uh, you is that can you quickly explain the perks of studying in Chandigarh College of Architecture? So any perk that you feel, can you explain that? So I think one of the biggest perks I find is the city itself. The city itself is such an architectural architectural symbol. Like people from all over the world come to see it as an architectural symbol, and you know, Corbusier designed it and all that stuff. So I think that itself is a very iconic uh, advantage of CCA, that you're in a city which has architectural history to itself. So you get a, you learn a lot from the city itself, right? First and foremost, and second, the college itself also has a lot of history of uh, excellent students and fat alumni. And obviously, the faculty here is very experienced. They've been here for years, and like I said, half of them are alumni. So we do get a mix of experienced teachers who have been experienced just in teaching, and uh, people who've been practicing on field for years, uh, who have also graduated from the same college and practiced in the field. So they can have tips and tricks to give us that they couldn't learn, that we can now learn to improve our career. And so a lot of I think the the mixture of experience teaching and experience practice that merges in the college I think that's a really good benefit for us. And uh, I think uh, CC has a very big network of people. So our alumni have uh, you know reached out in various places of the world, not just this country. So I think and and, and uh, having that backing to you in a college is really really good for you when you go into the real world to practice. So you know, we know that we can always uh, fall back for help to our college and our alumni whenever needed. So I think that's also a big, big plus. And obviously, the learning experience here is great. You, there's a lot of discussion that happens. There's a lot of uh, you know uh, interaction that happens that really teaches you a lot of professionalism and stuff you need to know in an architectural field. Now, Muskan, can you quickly tell us what is the fee structure and uh, what are the scholarship or maybe anything that you can get uh, if you are applying in Chandigarh College of Architecture? So, yeah. So you do get scholarships in your first year itself. Uh, there's scholarships based on just about uh, your admission. Like whoever had the highest rank, the first person to get admitted gets a little bit of scholarship. The first girl, the highest ranked girl, gets scholarship. 
and there's those uh, government funded scholarships for the students as any other government college and additional scholarships that are given are around in third year so for excellence you have gone and then you have a few competitions that you can take part in like you can give in your best work and if uh, your work's really liked then you get a scholarship so it's a merit based as well as a uh, uh, work based like you know experience based uh, scholarships you get uh, but yeah there there's a few in the first year and then you get a few in the third year and you do get a few in the final year as well if you want to pursue masters yeah again and a, like a merit based award system for whoever gets the best thesis and whoever scored the highest throughout their uh, course so those kind of awards are given and with them come uh, like scholarships and money to fund their education and what uh, about the fees yeah fee, yeah when it comes to the fee uh, our college is one of the most budget friendly colleges although being one of the best ones So the fee is from around seven to nine thousand. Can extend to ten thousand as well. It depends on the year, but that's the range it goes to, and it also depends on which year you're in. So the first year would be the cheapest, and then it obviously increases a little as the far you go. But it's not too expensive, and um, so that's the range: seven to uh, nine thousand, ten thousand per sem. So and uh, this does not include additional fees. So you have examination fees, and if you're a hostler, then you have to give a hostel fee and a canteen fee and all that stuff. But apart from that, just the semester fee alone is this much, and the examination fees and all are of maybe two, three thousand plus uh, over this. Uh, so yeah, it's pretty much very pocket friendly compared to other architectural colleges. So it's yeah. actually a really budget friendly college if you are uh, looking for a very budget friendly so there are uh, very little uh, college which offer education in just 10k range per semester so yeah that's a very good advantage to get enroll in cca so considering it's one of the best colleges and still has such a budget friendly uh, fee system is really great that you know you get quality education with not really having it be heavy on your pockets the next question is that can you tell our viewers something about placement and packages uh, in chandigarh college of architecture so how it happens and uh, even what is uh, the strategy that you guys use for it so we do have a placement uh, uh, admin block like an admin fee that's there Uh, but they're not used that often when it comes to the job part of it. Uh, they're used more extensively when it comes to internships. So because uh, so internships, we get a lot of recommendations from our college and from our teachers, which really helps us get into uh, any you know internship company or firm we want to go into. And uh, we have a history of applying all over the world. So you know, almost ninety percent of our students go out of India to intern. And there's just a few who stay in India, which is their personal choice, and what. Uh, so, and for both of which, uh, our college helps us out. Uh, we choose faculty members who will give us like, uh, letters of recommendations, and then there's obviously uh, the college administration who also gives us a few certificates and letters uh, that helps us get into internships. Uh, but when it comes to jobs, again, we can always fall back on our. Uh, College alumni and the college uh, administration to help us out a little, because there's no formal placement as such. But like I said, we can always fall back to the college admin and alumni for placements and jobs uh, apart from internships. Yeah. Can can you tell our viewers about what is the reservation? Uh, if a person is from Chandigarh, is he going to get a privilege or not? Or uh, a people from other state can get admission into CCA without reservation, or is it? Like what is the whole reservation part? Can you explain it? So there are forty seats in Chandigarh College of Architecture. It's very uh, like very few seats compared to other colleges. We just have forty. Uh, so in this, so there are like multiple categories. So there's a uh, SCST, there's defense, there's sports. All these quotas are there. There's four five quotas such, and then there's a local quota. So Chandigarh is a UT. So every government college college has a local quota. So it's it's usually the state quota. So since Chandigarh is a uh, union territory, their state quota means anybody who studied from Chandigarh gets an advantage. So usually, for example, if we take SPA Delhi or something like that, they would give uh, all the Delhi people. Or if we let's say if there's someone in Haryana or Punjab, uh, so they get an ex- uh, the people who have studied in Punjab, the whole state get an advantage. But since Chandigarh is like a UT, so the Chandigarh people get an advantage. So anybody who's done their schooling from uh, in 11th and 12th from Chandigarh 
uh, have a uh, can be make use of the local quota so the ranking over there varies a little like you can get you can have a higher ranking in, uh, than in all india or uh, seat and still get in because of the benefit of a local quota and i think there are around 50 to 20 seats uh, out of the 40 that are just for the local quota kids and the rest are uh, divided into the reservations that's the like, defense the the kashmiri migrant the scst the sports and uh, those are also like divided there's one for defense one for the uh, uh, kashmiri migrant one for sports and a few for the scst and then the rest are open for the uh, all india rankings so like the, that's like the general quota anyone from all over the world, uh, india can apply for those seats so muskan can you share uh, your portfolio with us so if a person is getting cca how student work there and what is the type of uh, project that you get so people can get an idea about the work that they will be doing so what i'm going to show you is the the latest stage of the latest project that i've been doing in this semester every every semester has different projects some have two three some have just one in this semester i just had one and uh, the level of work also depends on what year you are in so first year is mostly hand drafted sheets and hand work done like we're not very really allowed to use digital uh, softwares in our first year itself because they want us to have that experience uh, so what i'm going to show you is my latest project and the latest stage it's not the final product but it's work what i've been working on till now so just to give you an example of uh, how it goes this is the latest project that i've been working on currently it's a hill housing it's a today inside where we do a bit residential blocks So this is just a very basic, like a overview of my design for now. So we were supposed to make uh, three types of um, residential units in this. I have made a three BHK, a two BHK, and a one uh, BHK module. So this would be my three BHK module. So uh, we have a lot of freedom in how we want to express our designs. Uh, so we not really. So we obviously there's this specific set of rules that you have to give a plan, you have to give a section, you give an elevation. Uh, apart from that, we can use whatever method we want to use, be it a walkthrough, be it exonometrics like I've given, that helps the other person understand our design a little better. So there's not really restriction as to how you're supposed to represent your design. It's all upon you. Just the basic drawings are required, obviously. Uh, but apart from that, you can really just uh, explore a lot in this show. So this, uh, the latest stage of my design over here, I've, I chose to show the typical floor layout for the unit and the zonometric with a section and elevation. Uh, I chose to give a few sections because the zonometric explains a lot uh, which a section will. So those kind of adjustments are uh, allowed to do. They're allowed to do. So this is my sheet for the uh, three-bedroom house in the uh, this unit. So this is, it's a duplex. If you want to understand the design, I can get into that as well. I'm just gonna go through it. So then comes into my two bedroom housing units. I have a similar sheet for all three of them. I we I choose to keep the same pattern and theme throughout my sheets and throughout my stages as well. I like to keep that consistency. It's a personal choice. So again, uh, the section, the elevation, the drawing, and an exonometric, something that makes the person who's reading it understand the drawing without me having to explain it too much. And obviously, if an explanation is required, I'm always here. And then there is the one-bedroom housing unit, which is this again. So this is also considered to be the EWS housing unit. Um, so uh, we were supposed to make it as budget-friendly as possible. And uh, you know, not compromising on the quality too much. So this was my design to it. I have a similar module for all three of them. The floor area of all three buildings is the same. Just the space division and size changes because I wanted to have the uniformity in my entire uh, residential site. I didn't want it to really look like three different units. I wanted to have that uniformity, so I kept the same building uh, module, but obviously utilized the space and size differently. And then obviously the required site plan uh, you would require to give a site plan. So I I personally believe in very minimalistic drawings and minimalistic uh, presentations. Uh, but you can always you know go for renders and rendered site plans and render all of those things. I like to be minimalistic so that for my site plans and my drawings to be pretty minimalistic. Um, so this is just like a basic site plan just to make them understand where the blocking is, and then we give a service plan just to. Show where the entry is, what the roads are, where our services would go. 
So this is the latest stage that I'm working on for my design project. And yeah, this is, I'm not, I won't say the best example, but this is the average example for how the world goes in my college. Khan, I think uh, like uh, for a third year level, it's quite good. And uh, I know that every student thinks that he have to or she have to improve a lot in their design, but it happens to everyone, I think. And uh, uh, it improves. I think that for every architecture student, your work improves day by day. It's like you learn a lot of new skill, and uh, it goes on. So thank you so much uh, for joining us, Muskan, and sharing wonderful experience about CCA and uh, telling a lot of things about Chandigarh College of Architecture. And thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. It was wonderful. Yay!